Jexman, you want to keep eyes on the RV for me? I'll be back in a little bit, okay? All right, man. Good morning, family and friends of YouTube. Today's a different day. For the first time since I graduated, I am find myself back at the Evergreen State College in Olympia, Washington. I don't quite know how I'm gonna title this or what the thumbnail might hint at yet as I'm filming this right now. Um, but I will say this, uh, this is not probably gonna be the video you're expecting. <laughs> and I'm gonna keep smiling and keep a positive attitude and have a, have a fun light time with this video uh, because a lot of people are sometimes proud or excited when they come back to their alma mater college, you know, where they graduated and <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> However, it's still a beautiful college. It's absolutely beautiful. I guess that's about where it ends for me. <laughs> so I'm going to go walk through the college and we're gonna have a little chat. I'm gonna tell you some of my experiences of the Evergreen State College. Some things that uh, may surprise you, some uh, stuff they don't talk about. Uh, so maybe this video gets searched for and found for someone who's thinking about coming to Evergreen. If you're watching this and you found this because you were thinking about attending this college, well, let me let me clue you in on, on, on a few things here as, as we walk around. Yeah. yeah, I started my channel here in 2013 and I graduated from the Evergreen State College live on YouTube in 2014 with my Bachelor of Arts degree in media production. Before that, I got my Associate of Arts degree at Grace Harbor College in Aberdeen, Washington in business management. Okay, so what is this video essentially? Let's call it a pure, practical, honest review of factual things that happened during my two years of attending the Evergreen State College. Yeah, let's see, some other notables about the Evergreen State College. You may have heard about the longest animated TV series of all time on Fox. Anybody ever heard of The Simpsons? The creator of The Simpsons, Matt Green, attended this college, as a matter of fact. Uh, he did not complete his studies here. For whatever reason, he decided to move on and go elsewhere, but he did attend this college, and like him, I don't think either of us are very proud of our time here. It's pretty empty here on a Sunday in June. We're gonna dive right into this, guys. And again, no hating. Uh, I, I am. This is not like a mockumentary. Uh, this is not a roast of Evergreen just something to understand uh my very first quarter here semester no my very first quarter here at the evergreen state college i took a class a science-based class from an instructor named ej zeta who later attempted to run for congress here and there's some scandal we're not going to get into that part but my physical class itself this was something that no student could possibly be prepared for i don't care what high school you went to uh coming into class three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we spent the first five to 10 minutes of every class on gender assignment every single day. Uh, something brand new to me, very unexpected, very confusing, but for me to have to, for all of us to go around the room for that day and say, today, I'm male. My pronouns are him, <laughs> he, <laughs> okay. Which, okay, is fine. Again, I am, I'm totally okay with the transgender thing. You can be whatever you want to be in today's world. But the strange part is, why do we have to take five to ten minutes out of every class all semester long? Is that, is that really a thing where it, where it switches? Like, Monday I'm a man, but, but Wednesday I'm a female, and then Friday I'm, I'm back to male? Like, that's the thing. Like, couldn't we just set it and forget it for one semester? No because the Evergreen State College has the gender equality and gender assignment thing that has to be, I'm not saying that happens in every single class, okay? I'm just saying in that particular science class that I took with EJ Zeta, I had to write down and remember which classmates were switching from male, female. This sounds absurd, right? I, I, I hope it does because it was tough for me to understand what was going on day to day. And if you got it wrong, oh my, we had to stop class and, Remember students, we went over this this morning. Sally is he today, Robert is she today. Uh, ah, I have so much other stuff going on. Do I really have to? Yeah, yeah, we gotta worry about gender assignment. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was strange. 
it's it still is strange to me. I can't I can't grasp that concept. The Evergreen State College, is, yes, it is a liberal arts college. Clearly, we have a lot of hippies here. Well, we have a lot of diversity here at this college, but let's let's just point out there there is this other weird thing about being barefoot at the college, and they encourage it. Barefoot. No shoes, no socks, just walk around indoors, outdoor, barefoot. I would say more than 50% of the students here walk around barefoot all the time. Again, if it's my choice to wear shoes, no, no big deal. However, several different times I walked into the men's bathroom, which I think now is a gender equal bathroom. Anybody can go in any bathroom. But anyway, you go into the urinals. Let's say there's three urinals. There's a guy at both ends and I walk into the middle one and I look down both men next to me underneath the divider are standing barefoot in puddles of piss from other students. Just enjoying life, standing there in a puddle of piss, and then they walk out and don't even wash their hands. More than, more than a dozen times I have seen stuff like that here. And again, who cares, Eric? It's none of your business. Actually, it becomes my business because Evergreen is so weird, you can get to your very next class and the instructor may say or, and has said, okay, students, we're gonna take off our socks and shoes, we're gonna move all our desks to the edge, and we're gonna lay down on the floor together, and we're gonna meditate. No, we are not. Again, not being negative, I'm just telling, telling it how it is. Let's move on to something positive. I like, the, I like the trees, the moss, I like the evergreens. Okay, back to reality now. I don't like to generalize an entire student body, so that's not what I'm doing here. However, I'm gonna generalize anyway because it's a lot, it's a lot. It's an alarming amount of students have you ever smelled what mold smells like? Like peeled back some uh, drywall and found black mold or something like that, something that had moisture? And I think many of us have know what that smell of mold is. Have you ever smelled mold on a person? This one is, is tricky because usually it would be raining here year round, okay? Uh, so mold is present in our clothes, our jackets, our, our favorite pair of shoes and pants and our hats and stuff. I, I guess that smell of moldy moisture clothes is possible, but how do so many students have the scent of mold day after day? Getting onto an inner city transit bus and being shoulder to shoulder standing up and just that repulsive moldy smell nonstop all day in the class. It smells like nobody bathes here and I'm not trying to be mean, Again, I am generalizing the entire, it's not everybody. It is an alarming amount of students that continually, day after day, week, month, smell like they have never showered in their life. <laughs> it's just mold. How do you smell like mold? I don't know. Perhaps the biggest thing about Evergreen, the thing you may have already known, is the grading system and how that works based on a self-evaluation to graduate. Yes, you heard me right. This part's significantly important for someone like me who came from Grace Harbor College with a 4.0 GPA, something very specifically measured, correct? So I also was on the president's list, the honors roll, and a member of Phi Theta Kappa for my 4.0 GPA, which is something I was very proud of when I got there. When you come to Evergreen, none of that matters. Your past grades that transfer over, none of that matters anymore because there is no grade system. It is simply a self-evaluation for every course you take and your graduate self-evaluation. Yes, you have to write it and it has to get approved by your instructor, but they always approve it. It's, it's a pass-fail. You either, <laughs> you either passed the class or didn't. You either graduated or you didn't. <laughs> it is, it was very tricky for someone like me who likes the structure and the numbers and that feedback telling me that I'm doing something well, right? Also, being a liberal arts college here, uh, protesting and uh, doing all those hippie things is, is really big and awesome here. They, 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 love, they love that kind of stuff. Sorry, I don't know what that high pitch is. Uh, but here's something you gotta get used to. All of your assignments and stuff is based on group projects. Like everything, there's almost no individual things that you do 
at, at this college. They're all based on getting together with students outside of class and depending on other students for your pass-fail, correct? So even if your presentation is completely ready, you come in on Wednesday, there's three other members of your group who don't show up on Wednesday unexpectedly. The instructor calls you up, says, Eric, time for your group's presentation. Uh, I have no idea where the other three members of my group are that have different pieces of this project. What do you want me to do? Well, I guess you just uh, can't present. Sorry. You all fail this project. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Great. Because that's just awesome. Well, on Friday, after the fact, two days later, on Friday, those three students can come in and go to their instructor and say, we were protesting something that we strongly felt we needed to protest downtown Olympia. That's why we weren't here. And the instructor will say, awesome, I'm so proud of you. That's an automatic excused absence after the fact. <laughs> excuse, what, what's the point of an excused absence? We, we all failed the project. Like, urgh, it's so irritating. Counting on Evergreeners. We have evergreen time, which means every class starts 10 minutes late. Everybody is always late. There, there is no accountability. And so let's go back to that gender assignment thing, you know, where you have to announce your gender every time at the start of class. What exactly are you teaching students about accountability? Is that the way it is in the real world? You think everywhere you go, you get, you get to pick your, your gender each day? It, it is absolutely absurd, and it is teaching people that there's no accountability. You're not, you're not teaching students how to survive in the real world, because the real world is, you go to McDonald's and come back the next day and say, I was protesting. That's why I wasn't here yesterday and never called or told anybody. I don't care. You're fired. Get out of here. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, here in June, you won't find them. But most places, you will have a garbage can where you can throw your waste in like a normal, like anywhere. You know, you put your garbage into a garbage pail. Here, it's a little more tricky. If I have a napkin or a coffee cup, well, you can't have a coffee cup because they don't give out coffee cups. You have to, even if you buy your coffee, you have to have a reusable cup. Let's say a, a, a napkin. Oftentimes when we get to these trash centers, there will be a line of people trying to throw away their trash. And you will have a student here, a volunteer, he will tell you what, what you have, what, where it's supposed to go exactly. There's a lot of stuff that's not labeled on here. I feel like it should be. He will scream at you, he will yell at you if you start to put it in the wrong one. There's a line of people trying to throw away garbage and they freak the hell out over putting it in the right one. Anyway, just thought you should know that. That is very unusual. I have never seen such a big ordeal about garbage. Yeah, I recycle, but I don't know. The old clock tower there, and this is called Red Square. Just has always been that way. I'm gonna start heading out of the college and back to the parking lot. And that brings me to, I believe, my last point. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but my last point is uh, the Evergreen State College has been making national news the last few years. They've held an event in April every year since 1971 called Day of Absence. This event started peacefully to bring awareness to minority uh, students here at the college. That, that's what it was. However, in 2017, things got ugly. We made national news. The school had to be shut down for several days. SWAT teams came in. People were rolling dumpsters into cars and smashing things with hammers. So much anger. And apparently enrollment is down some 25% here in 2019. That's a big number. Well, Eric, did you enjoy any of the Evergreen State College? You bet. Like I said, I got my bachelor arts degree and I earned it. I, I guess. I, I wrote my self-evaluation and said, I passed, I get a degree. Okay, cool. Okay, that is a very weird bike. There's the seat. Is that comfortable? That's just strange. No, I liked parts of Evergreen. I really, truly did, I promise you. Uh, I loved my, my drama class with uh, Marla Elliott. Uh, kind of taught me some things, uh, got me more comfortable in front of the camera for, for YouTube, so that's a good thing. And I loved my Media Artist Studio class with Lori Meeker here, where I learned to edit and produce and make videos, and that's how, what morphed into the whole film production part of my degree here. So yeah, I got a lot out of it. I got what I wanted out of it, and I got some transferable skills, and it helped me become the man I am today on YouTube. So I just had to point out some of these oddities and strangeness because 
it, I never felt comfortable here ever. I never ever once felt, I felt like I was walking on eggshells every single day. And I would not recommend this college to anyone I know. If you're coming here because you'll get along with everything I just said, awesome, you may love this place. But if you're a friend of mine, and you are seriously thinking that this is gonna be a good decision to come to this college from wherever you're at, don't do it. Please don't do it. <laughs> I hate to say that, and I know all of my Evergreen faculty and other students who have graduated here are like, Eric, what are you doing? I'm sorry, I don't like the place. I don't like the Evergreen State College at all. I never will. It leaves a bad taste in my mouth, and um, do your research, guys. I hope this video was helpful. I'm gonna get back to the RV and see Jax. It is strange seeing that big old Class A RV parked here on the Evergreen parking lot and uh, to see where I've come from. I'm still glad things worked out the way they did. I just, I had a really tough time at this college. Ha ha, look at that big ham in the window. How much is that kitty in the window? Meow. Hey buddy, you wanna come out? You can get some grass? So. I don't even want to really apologize for this video, but I want to say this is a little unusual for me to make a video like this and say, be so critical of the college that I graduated from with my Bachelor of Arts degree. But again, I think some of this uh, needed to be said, needed to be uh, brought to light um, because it's, it's factual. It's how, how things really worked for me and it's how I remember the college. So we, Jax and I, are gonna hit the road and go on an adventure. And you're coming with us. Uh, you just have to wait two days until we can get our next upload done. We're gonna go have some fun, make some new memories, see some new stuff, and uh, explore Washington a little more. Definitely stay out of the liberal arts areas and uh, go find nature, okay? Okay, guys have a good night. Jax and I'll see you soon, bye-bye.